to it, how do you balance your different talents? Um, how do I balance? Um, I think it's just calling for when, knowing for when which talent is called for. Um, as, as an MC, I'm different from when I'm a singer or when I'm acting or when I'm uh, uh, doing comedy. So I just need to know which box I fit in at the time and what service is being demanded for, and I supply that. Um, there are other many creatives who say, "Oh, um, I'm multi-talented. There's no, there's no need to tailor or stream my talent into one angle to say, okay, make a living or earn a living.' They don't do, they do the, they just touch the topic and do a bunch of different things at once." Is there any, did you ever put any of your talents aside to say, oh, I'm going to work on this so this keeps the second point before picking any other one up? No, no, because I think for me, uh, um, I think for me, um, with entertainment, sort of like all of the things you do sort of like tie in. I'm a singer, I'm a, I'm a, as a singer, as an MC, as an actor, all these things are entertainment. So it's not necessarily taking the time off from anyone to harness another. A lot of times, I think what I found myself doing is I'm learning on the job. Even with being in Nollywood, I'm learning on the job. Doing comedy, I'm learning on the job because it wasn't something I planned. Comedy wasn't planned at all. Like, I wanted to just sing. I wanted to, I just, I, I didn't stop one to do the other. I just kind of like, as I'm, as I'm doing one, I'm doing the other. And it's sort of like tied in. What would you say about your journey so far from starting from BG to this point, what would you say? Um, I'm very, first of all, I am very, very, very grateful um, because it didn't have to happen that one silly voice note that I considered something I sort of like just did all the time would go viral. That would go viral and then that would have now, to, to, to God be all of the glory for that. Um, but I've been doing this for 11 years, and it really dawned on me that, oh, 11 years, I've done my hustle, I've, I've done my 9 to 5 while doing Chi Girl, I've, I've worked, you know, in low-paying jobs, I've collected zero money. To, to see myself go from that to this, um, over time, I'm, I literally, I'm still sort of, sometimes I find myself even pinching myself, like, is this really you? So just try not to mess up the opportunity that you have, just try to make as much impact a positive impact as possible and that's literally what my main goal is i want to make a difference positively in the lives of people and the society as a whole that's the objective you make mention of paying all your deeds and all that how do you at one point you like okay no more low paying jobs no more freebies no more i bet help me now just i mean the thing about it is i still mind. i still have those though i still have those and i still have projects that i work on that Either if it pulls on my heartstrings, like for example, what I try to do, if I'm doing a job for a school or an event, I know how sometimes what I can accept and what I accept. Sometimes I accept nothing at all, especially one that is close to my heart. So I, I'm, I'm an advocate for education and the system in Nigeria. So a lot of times I do things with, with students and going to schools and and that one, I just do it sometimes just for free. I don't have to be paid for that because I feel like that's what we just just as my contribution to society. Um, but even as I was as we came along, like I think it was my manager and I just talked about you know when do we really figure out that this is going to be our daily bread and when do we know that okay I know my worth and once you know your worth, then you know that there are some things you won't take small money for. Um, there are some things you know what you bring to the table. It's just like somebody taking your product, making money for themselves off of your product, but they want to offer you peanuts for it. Well, how, how do you okay. gain? You don't gain at all. That's a whole loss. So you have to figure out when, and you have to be business wise. You have to be wise. How did you learn to play the value on yourself and your art? Uh, how do I learn to place value on myself? When you become kind of like in demand. When people want you to do stuff, you know that kind of sort of like a big deal. It's not even about becoming proud or haughty or whatever, but you just sort of like know, I know, I know what I'm doing. And if you want me to do this for you, with you, at, a, at an event, at a, for a project or whatever, you know what my, my presence brings to your table. So therefore, you have to also now know that 
anybody that is asking you to do something for them, it's not all. Some of us we pass the stage. You you can start your career on. They are putting me in the forefront to help me. But it gets to a place where you're not like, you know what? How about you support me flying by now giving me what I'm worth? Not taking advantage of what I have because you know me or because you've known me for a while. I knew you when you started all these stories. And this is what people do all the time to up and coming artists. I, I knew you when you were not. So, so what? But I've grown. I've grown. And if you're a good person, you want me to grow and you want me to, to, to excel. That means you don't want to take me for granted. But a lot of times, especially in this space, we love things for granted. We love to take people for granted. Tell people because I knew you when now. So that means, so what if you knew me when? That was then my past. This is my present and my future. Especially if I eat from, this is I feed my family from, so I take care of my people from. Say, what about managing multiple interests or passion? Will you advise someone to pursue it all? As it comes, or focus on developing each interest as it comes. No, you, you can't. You, I will. Um, if, 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 let me make sure I didn't get you wrong. I don't think it is possible, especially in the space that we're in, where you can say, it depends on what kind of interest you're talking about. If it's in entertainment, it's like saying I'm taking off from MC to go and focus on my acting. Or I'm taking off from perfecting my singing, or I'm going to focus on my singing and not do anything else that I do. Something has to pay your family has to be taken care of. If you are blessed to have more than one talent and your brand is being diversified, where the other talents can can help you survive as you pay your bills and do all those things while you can still sort of focus on one career path, then fine. But I don't think you need to stop one to focus on the other because I think you lose at the end of the day. You need to try to multitask. You have to try to multitask. How, how do you multitask what? Efficiently. Well, I mean, maybe it's because I am someone who has sort of always been able to multitask. Like I, I mean, I taught, I was teaching in school and I was an act, I was acting. I was, even when I was in college, when I was in, when I lived in America, I was teaching high school and I was doing plays and I was, so I kind of sort of, because it's, in my opinion, they all tied together. I use my acting skills in my classroom. I... I use my singing skills when I'm teaching. So I use all those aspects of the talent that I have to, if, in each job. And I use what I learned from there and interacting with children when I'm on stage and when I'm in front of the camera. And so they sort of like intertwine somehow and to make, to for market to sell, that kind of a thing, for lack of a word. Um, so I don't know if, if it's, you have to sort of like, I think, hmm. No. First of all, if you're going to focus on one thing, realize that you're giving up repercussions to that. Be ready for those repercussions and be ready to face them. So I think it's good to prepare for those repercussions. And how do you sort yourself out with those repercussions? It's good to know and be prepared in your mind. Um, I think at the end of the day, you let, unless somebody somewhere that is not your friend is exposing secrets about you to the general public other than that if you are aware if you whatever you whatever you put out there you are you should be ready once again prepare for repercussions whatever you put out there be ready for feedback the internet does not forget the internet is not forgiving at all um i've tried to let as much of my business, personal business, because one, it's also to be transparent because there are things about me that I've said I'll speculate. I don't like speculation. Why are you speculating? Oh, she, she used to be married? Yeah, I say it myself. Oh, how old is she? Yeah, at my age, myself. So no, you don't need to guess. Um, so they don't say, oh, she's fronting or she's lying or she's pretending. I want people to know that I think it's better when you tell the truth. You see, if I laugh at myself, when you laugh at me, it won't pay me as much because I'm already laughing at myself. So if I tell my truth the way I want my truth told, nobody else can tell the truth for me. So you, if you want to put your business out there, know how much of your business you're going to allow to be put out there. And that's what you can control. You can control that. How much? 
But if you surround yourself with people who will tell you the truth and who love you and care about you and your well-being, so you, you're in a place where even your vulnerabilities are shown, but in a safe space. There's nothing like being in a safe space. So that means your business is to, to be who you are. You're, you can be naked without feeling naked, if you understand what I'm saying. If you understand what I'm saying. So be aware of how much of your life you want to be seen. Be aware. Okay. First of all, I have a manager who is about brand building. Um, and I am surrounded by people who are involved with the brand and diversifying the brand. So my manager brings up ideas where we can add value to a brand from whatever part of my talent. Um, I, you know, I'm telling my story about my life and my health and my struggle, my weight or whatever. That's an aspect of me as a singer, as, as a comedian. That's an aspect of me that anybody, a brand wants to use that. We use that. So you have to sort of like, even if you don't have a manager, if you keep an eye out and you you can write a plan, you, you yourself can write them out and give them out to, to companies. Especially when you're up and coming, they want to maybe use new people who are good. As long as you know that your, your brand is a brand that can bring value to somebody else, you can sell yourself or find a way to sell yourself to for brands to use you. And you start there, you build. And you, you maybe you build relationships with brands and you establish connections and you establish contact and then they keep coming back. And that's how maybe somebody takes your name to somebody else and then somebody else is calling you. But you have to always be professional, always be on point, always evolve, always be fresh, always be new, always be, always be good, always. And I need to see that, that you, that you work hard at perfecting yourself in your talents, whichever one it is or however many they are. Be the best at what you do. Be the best. If you have 10 talents, be the best in those 10. That's what I strive for. Your reputation is very important. It's very important, especially when you consider a family brand. I have a brand that is very family-oriented and very sort of wholesome, for lack of a better word. And you in situations or circumstances or positions that make your brand go to the left or skewer because now to your brand now you look fake now you look like yeah we have lives and and that's why you have to be careful where you go what you do you know be careful of how how i do when i'm outside be careful of how who i'm with when i'm outside I'm, because you don't want to be seen you can't because nobody's when, when there's a story about you out there there's no time to go and say no this really what happened though no it's perception. It's not even the truth. It's perception. Perception is what is what rules the world. They perceive you and they assume they know and say they're like in their minds, maybe they're even praying silent that maybe you will fall one day. So when you give them a small inch, then they're miles. So it is very important to be careful where you are, what you do, how you do it, with who you're doing. Be careful of your associations, be careful of your friends, be careful of your surroundings so that your reputation sort of like stays intact. We all fall, you know, likely to, to fall and fail at some time and there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, also at the same time, you learn how to not let let your your failures and just get the best of you. But if you're careful with your friendships, especially your friendships, you need to have people in your, in your camp that tell you, Kai, don't do that. Stop. Don't go there. I understand you clearly. Um, there, there are people who find it necessary to do any and everything to remain relevant. Right? Go in the right direction? Okay. Yeah. There are people who find it necessary to do any and everything to be famous or infamous. I am not one of those people that thinks or feels like I have to do to be seen as relevant. First of all, some of those certain things go against my brand and what I'm putting out there. What we forget a lot of times, this internet, this social media, our love and our fans and whatever else, when you, when you step to the left or step back, the same people will probably push you down to the ground and stomp on you and walk on you and walk on to the next person. The internet does not forget and it's not forgiving. 
Social media does not forget and is not for find ways to pull up your phone in front of you every single time. At the time you feel like I'm good, I want to do something sweet and new, boom, something will come out that you did you forgot self about. And it's not in front of you, and you're not like, oh my god, what I'm gonna do now? Oh gosh, yeah. So, so, so it's the same things I say to everyone around, and I feel like these are things that help me in my life, and I feel like they'll help anybody. Um, work hard, continue to try and better yourself. Stay humble, stay grounded. Be kind. Know where you're coming from. Know where you're going. Because sometimes humility will open doors for you that your talent never will. People will like you just because of the way you are. People like you just because of the way you are, not what you do. And that's like a whole other kind of just a whole other source of blessing that you don't even understand. So whether you're upcoming, currently working, trying to establish yourself, know your worth, know what you're doing, be aware, better yourself every opportunity that you can. I still watch comedy shows. I pick this and that from here and there. I still go and listen to people sing. I practice my runs. I practice my riffs and my runs when I'm singing jazz. I still... You know, I learn new accents. I'm trying to clean, do new accents so I can have more than 13. I want to have more than 13. All righty. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh my God bless you guys. Good night.